This was a sad sight. Landing craft tank LCT 7074, when she arrived at HM Naval Base Portsmouth for restoration by the National Museum of the Royal Navy. An orphan of the ocean, a naval warrior cast aside by the world she'd fought to rescue from tyranny. On the beach, full of rust and rot, filthy and forgotten. Not anymore. Not now the National Museum's engineering team have her in hand. Externally, she's going to look like she did in 1944. It's an incredible challenge, but it's just so exciting to see us motoring along and actually moving. So you spray and grind. You scream and chamfer. You cut and repair. And slowly, the truth of your ship the last of 800 D-Day tank landing craft comes into the light once more. All this work is for a clear purpose. To support the National Museum of the Royal Navy's commitment to have us all engage with the story of Britain's Navy and to provide a stunning new asset for South Sea's D-Day Story Museum. And to honour those who landed in Normandy on the 6th of June 1944 to free Europe from Nazism. Some of those veterans are here today, along with volunteers from D-Day Story. For them all, the work of LCTs like 7074 must be remembered and honoured. They were the bully boys that went in early to create the, the landing space. And it was the little boys in the landing craft who set about getting on shore and creating a bridgehead. It's an extra exhibit which will be external to the displays we have already. So to have an outdoor viewing um, of something relevant I think is, is really special. To put it into perspective, I often think about my own son who's 18 and how he would have faced that. And I just cannot imagine it. I really can't imagine it. But, uh, you know, they were somebody's sons, somebody's brothers, somebody's husbands. And, you know, they didn't know if they were going to return or not. This will be LCT 7074's new home, where D-Day Story volunteers will welcome visitors on board. A giant structure of steel and weatherproof fabric, hard by the waters of the Solent in South Sea, where so many D-Day vessels assembled before the invasion. With the restoration of LCT 7074 gathering pace, another major step forward, a new bow door, just like the forward ramp that slammed down on the Normandy beaches and sent her cargo of Allied tanks rumbling ashore. What we've replicated here is from the original drawings and we've recreated the actual size and dimensions of the door of the original feature. Although she's a lot lighter because she's only actually going to take people and she won't be taking a tank in here. There's a classic Royal Navy quip, familiar to every sailor. If it moves, salute it. If it doesn't, paint it. The MLUK team took that to heart, covering every inch of the 59 metre ship by hand. Then came her name, the soul of the LCT. There is a, ever so faint outline of where they were originally, but obviously where it's had repairs and, and things done to it, it's, um, there's not much of it left. So we're just going on what, what's there and trying to fill in the gaps. 14 months and nearly 900 litres of paint later, the giant marquee that's protected LCT 7074 during her restoration is removed. Curtain up. that 7074 awaits now is her funnel, her armament and other key equipment. 
everything visitors to D-Day story will see, including two embarked tanks, is backed by detailed research into the LCT and her role at Normandy in 1944. With hundreds of assault ships engaged, the landings were a numbers game throughout, and the numbers had to be right. 7074's 3517. In order to make sure that the invasion was successful and all of the troops landed in the right place at the right time, it was crucial that all of them were allocated to a, a, a very complicated timetable, and this number relates to LCT 7074's role. We've recorded every inch and every minute of what we've done and then those paint layers, that primer and then finally what was always going to be the most exciting bit was, was the camouflage finish and the numbers and then later on we've got her funnel going back on and all that kind of stuff. So this is the really lovely rewarding bit that just makes you feel really emotional actually. Are you tempted to take a paintbrush and pop up and do a bit of work with Darren and the lads? I, I would be very tempted but I'm nowhere near as good as they are so no chance whatsoever. They shouldn't let me anywhere near them. <laughs> So here she is, LCT 7074, ready to deploy into her new role, to stand for her sister ships and their crews as a reminder of the greatest invasion in history. It's taken six years to get here, as long as the Second World War itself. To mark anew the courage and sacrifice of D-Day, the beginning of the end of the agony of Europe.